Mic's up. Here we go. All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to another episode of Breakfast with Disaster. Uh, I am Dan Bauer. I'm here with you every single week, and we are in a new environment, obviously. Usually we're going live every Tuesday at 10, 10 a.m. from my office, and I tell you about all the worst things that could happen so that you know how to avoid them. Today we have changed locales, and that's so we can interview this fine fella to my right. On camera, he's to my left. That's always confusing to me. Uh, this is Travis. Um, Hello, all. Do you want to introduce yourself, Travis? You want me to do it? Uh, yeah, you do it better than I would. All right, so Travis here um, is our construction coordinator. So a lot of people do not know that we do construction. They, it's a, It is a relatively new service line for us and for serve pros in general, but it's a huge thing for us, and, and there's a simple reason why. Um, people's houses get destroyed by disasters. We go in and fix the damage, they still have holes in their walls and holes in their floors and their roof is torn off and God knows what. Someone's got to put all that together and we found that people would much rather do it with one company all the way through than have to call like 19 different subcontractors and pull all their hair out. So we thought, we've we got some construction acumen. Tom, the owner, owned a construction company for a long time. We've got an incredible construction team here now all in house and Travis is the kind of guy who uh, runs the day to day as our construction coordinator. Is that fair? Is yeah, that a good that's, intro? That's a pretty good intro. I like it. Yeah. Much um, better than I would have done. I'm curious to know what you would have said. <laughs> uh, well, why don't you give us um, a little bit of your background? And, and good morning to everybody who's on. It's kind of hard for me to reach my computer here and check who is. Uh, but I'm sure all the usual suspects are here saying hello, and it is really great to have you here. Um, what's your story, Travis? What's the deal? Well, my story, uh, obviously, Tom and Lynn are my parents, so I, I've grown up in surf for my whole life started before I could even drive um, you know you have your rebellion as a kid so once I started working um, I said I don't want to work for you guys and I went out and worked on my own and I did reconstruction for a while um, before the accident put me in a wheelchair um, so then I came back you know I started on the mitigation side which I was on before the wheelchair as well um, so I've done a little bit of both and then in the office I started mainly on the, the mitigation side and then after, I don't know, five years or so, I moved over to the recon side uh, because of my experience. And, you know, that, that had been starting to grow and we needed an office coordinator here. Um, so that's that's kind of my story and, and how I yeah. got here. I like that your teenage rebellion was, I don't want to work for you, Dad. I'm going to do exactly what you did. Yes. <laughs> um, let's, let's talk about, like, the construction department, because it is new for some people. Mm -hmm. um, when did we even start doing construction? Like 2017, 2018? Uh, yeah, I would say eight years ago, roughly. Okay. Uh, is that 2017? What that year is it be, now? That would be 15. Okay. I feel a little <laughs> less old now. Yeah. Um, I, feel, it, I feel very old. I just hit 40, midlife crisis. Oh, he's going, he's, yep. he's terrible. He's very <laughs> Um Why do we, I mean, I, I kind of hinted at it but why, why, why did we get into that whole line of business I would say you know another revenue stream and because Tom the owner my dad that's where he started that's you know his his main skill set if you will he's a mm -hmm. very good very good builder he still does stuff at age 70 he still goes out and builds stuff once you in a while blown so up his kid. spot tell yeah. his age <laughs> well I told my age so oh yeah that's true yeah. um I think I mean on top of just the fact that we have the skill to do it, one of the things that makes it such an important thing here is um, obviously we deal with a lot of people going through crises, crisis, mm -hmm. crisis, crises, crises, yeah. yeah. Um, and if you look at the data, if you look at the studies, and I've talked about these studies before about what makes a claim go well, because nobody really wants to put in the claim, nobody wants a disaster to happen, but what makes it go well is having a single voice throughout that process guiding you through. And what we found is if we can offer the service to put everything back together, we can do everything. We can do, we can rebuild your house, we can get rid of the damage, we can clean your textiles, we can, um, I don't know, probably do your dishes if you really <laughs> want to do it. You know, there, there really, it, it became the key to being that full service sort of concierge approach to, to restoring people's homes and their lives and their businesses. Yeah, and it also is nice to wear you know, we're not just a standalone reconstruction company where we have to go and try to find work. We already kind of have our foot in the door once the mitigation is over. Sure, we have a relationship with people and mm -hmm. they, they want to work with us because right. they think they're going to get taken care of. Uh, let's talk about some jobs, actually. I, and I'm curious if you can walk people through the process of like what you do. 
Um, Because I don't know how you do it. Like, helping people select countertops. That alone seems terrifying to me. Uh, But I... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, luckily, we have a subcontractor for that. (laughs) um, Where I can kind of... You know, once our estimate is written and agreed upon with the adjuster, I can then send... um, you know the dimensions and the allowed price to the subcontractor to where then the insured can go down and pick a, a choice within that price range right um well shout out to our subs <laughs> they do help us out um let's talk about a couple of jobs just walk me through the process so this is um from 2017 this was a pretty nasty mold job mm-hmm. you can see um all that gross it, it looks like a splatter of almost like concrete <laughs> in this picture and there was this was just all over i think i may have more photos here um, when 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 somebody calls you, and we obviously would do the mold remediation mm-hmm. first, and we in this in this case ended up demoing, throwing out a bunch of their stuff because it was non salvageable. Yeah. Um, they they walk into a house that's like kind of potentially gutted to pieces. Mm-hmm. What's that first conversation like? Oh well, you know the, they're obviously very distraught, and they're at least happy now that we have approached the rebuild stage. Um, you know, we have pictures from what it looked like before. So, you know, we walk in there. The estimate has to be agreed upon beforehand. So my um, construction manager can walk in there with the estimate, kind of go over it with the insured. You know, sometimes the insured, you know, this is a chance to to make changes. Yeah. Um, so they can maybe pay for some uncovered things out of pocket if they wanted to kind of change some things because now they can kind of tweak their house a little bit more to uh, as they see fit or as they would want. Right. And we've seen that actually, uh, at least I know I have with um, older customers who want to live, kind of stay in place as they age, this is a great opportunity for them to, okay, I'm going to start living on the first floor or I'm going <laughs> to change up the bathroom, things like that, yes. where they can, they now have this opportunity where a lot of, uh, frankly, the, the legwork of putting all of this together is going to be done for them. A lot of the work that might they want to have done already might already be covered by insurance right. so now they're just making a couple of tweaks to to make that home more livable yeah or they can maybe update the quality from the allotted price you know mm-hmm. of what insurance improved things like that sure and i i mean i see this this turned out beautiful obviously um i will say our construction guys fantastic construction team not great photographers <laughs> so i apologize some You're of these limited are limited on the pictures yeah <laughs> um but you can see just the, the the sheen on the floor i mean this is a brand new home and this was gutted down basically to the studs mm-hmm. um to make this happen and they were able to work with someone as part of the the entire project management process to not just remediate their mold but they got a new house out of it um let's talk about this one and this was a pretty nasty garage fire and this is this was particularly nasty because it happened on Christmas Eve. It was a leaf blower overheated in a garage, and it caused massive I mean, this is a picture of what was left of the garage, but also massive damage to the home. Here's the siding just from the heat alone. And the house itself um, ended up seriously affected, not just by soot and smoke, but the firefighting effort. Yes. You know, and, and God bless the firefighters for what they do, but it, it's it leaves damage. There's water everywhere. Yeah, they do um, a great job, but they don't treat your house well. They uh, save well, your they, house. They save your house. Yes. They wouldn't. There wouldn't be a house there if they weren't <laughs> there. But it's there. There's work to be done to remediate that damage. So that came first. Uh, but I remember walking through here myself with um, shout out to Don Jablonski. I remember being there with him walking through. Um, when we got to the end of this mitigation process, I mean, you sort of had a lot on your shoulders to put this house back together. What was that like? Um, and you guys did a great, I've got a picture, I think, of Hofner up on a piece of scaffolding here. Um, I mean, this is the project you remember, like, in... in... Yes, I mean, this, you know, um, some customers, it's very hard, you know, they kind of want their hand held. Um, you you got to walk through every tiny little aspect with them, from on-site to in the office to shipping them to a subcontractor. Um, some customers even, you know, want choices made for them. I mean, it's anything from... A customer will handle all the choices themselves to where they'll ask us to just, you know, give them something that, you know, kind of looked as they had it before the loss. Mm-hmm. So this customer, I mean, I remember, I've spoken to this customer plenty. You have as well. Lovely, lovely lady. Uh, but mm-hmm. someone who definitely needed help getting through to the yes. end of the process, which you were able to provide. Yes. I mean, I talked to her multiple times every day. I mean. Your, your best friend. Family your member now, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and it is, I mean, we're not kidding. That That is pretty common. You you develop a relationship with folks just in the act of helping them through something really traumatic and helping them get to the end of it and talking to them so much that that does happen. You you, yeah. you become very familiar with them. Um, 
Some of them invite us to picnics. I don't know. Yeah, that. Um, I got one more job here, and I thought this was an interesting one, and I, I hope you can speak to this. This was a to- basically a total loss house fire, mm-hmm. and you would think, based on that uh, vernacular, that would mean there really wasn't much for a serve pro to do, because what are you going to save? There's nothing to save. We're going to demo that whole house. Right. Um, but we did something. We did this. Um, yes. I mean, so how did this come about where we build an entire house? Yeah, I mean, it's not, not really much more to say than that. It was, it was a complete loss. It was something that our house was demoed down to the foundation, and then we took it from there. Yeah. It's, um, I mean, that, that I think speaks to, and I was very impressed when I saw this happen, that a we had the skill in house to do this and the, and the manpower in house to do this, but also, I think what we brought to the table is also just an understanding of like how insurance works. Mm-hmm. We we had worked on this claim already. We knew the adjuster. We were able to say, okay, here's your settlement. What do you want to do with it, and, and turn it into a new house, which right. is, you know, generally our goal is to save what's there. But in this um, sort of particular case, this was the best option for them, and we were able to make that happen. And um, again. Uh, here's another shot of, uh, just of the house coming up, and I love the Serve Pro truck in the front. Um, I don't have a picture. Thank you, construct team of the yes, full house. Yes. I found out right before we came on here, so I, I will be addressing this with them come the end of this. Yeah, okay. maybe maybe go take a ride out there and, and snap a pic. Yes. Yeah, so. um, but I mean, I think really really incredible stuff that you guys do. Um, obviously, very not only labor intensive but communication intensive mm-hmm. it's a high care sort of job yes um and that's you know do you ever think you were going to be in in that position where you were um you know on the phone every day talking about selecting countertops and in flooring and stuff i, I did not yeah you know, that, that is a lot of my day on the phone um you know kind of guiding and helping you know maybe even making selections for someone and emailing them I, is this something that you would like and you know, then they can come to an agreement on it. Or, you know, I definitely I definitely like the subcontractors we have and what they provide because, you know, I can send them to the actual store. They can see it in person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think there's the subs that we work with. Um, I mean, the bulk of all the work is being done in-house, but the subs we work with, we work with so much that mm-hmm. you do have that high level of trust. They really are kind of yes. part of the team. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've had uh, the, the two main ones we've had for as long as I can remember and yeah, you know, I definitely trust them. You know, we wish each other, we sent each other stuff for Christmas. You know, they've been around mm-hmm. for so long. Now you're, um, speaking of subs and in-house and all that, you're hiring. Yes. Uh, what, hiring. What, are you, what are you hiring for? Uh, why would somebody want to come work here? Um, that I don't know, you know. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Making a great pitch already, yeah. 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 Uh, it would be to kind of, you know, I mean, that is one great thing about doing reconstruction is just uh, the product that you build and put out. Like, people take pride in that. So being able to do that, you know, we're looking for a lead. Uh, so we want a skilled reconstruction guy who can also, you know, have his teammate with him and lead them to take a job from, like you saw, nothing to, uh, to something. Mm. And I think the thing that we probably look for the most whenever we speak to someone, as, as much as the skill is important, is people who have a genuine interest in helping people. And that sounds a little cheesy, but you need that because this is hard work. And um, if you don't, if that's not something that gets you going, if that's not something you're going to get a boost from, you're probably you know, not going to do well here. But if you can come in and say, understand the change you're making in someone's life, you're going to want to come to work every day. Right. And so that's what we look for the most. Yeah, and, and you know, as, as cliche as it might sound, we are, we are a little family here, you know, so we definitely want someone will contribute to that as well not treat this solely like a job <laughs> yeah um i think we're we're big family we're at least a That's medium-sized right. family at this point. Yes. um anything else you want to say uh no i think i i think i've said a lot i so. think you did great yeah. um we're gonna go to our prize wheel and do you know about the prize wheel i do not travis doesn't know about the prize wheel because he doesn't watch because he <laughs> does not support me i'm too busy oh yes okay <laughs> every week we've got this prize wheel up and to get your number on this prize wheel, it's very simple. You've got to be part of the Serve Pro Mug Club. Very easy to be part of the Serve Pro Mug Club. You just tell me, I bring you a coffee mug, and not only do you get a coffee mug, there's a little number on the bottom. That number gets assigned to this wheel. If I call your number, you win a prize every week. And if you're watching and I call your number, you win a double prize. So anyone who's out there watching in, in TV land uh, wants to be eligible for that double prize, only way for me to know, 
leave a comment. Say hi, Travis. Say bye, Travis. Um, <laughs> say Travis. I hope you'll for- be here next week. I hope. We'll, yeah, <laughs> forty isn't that bad. Yeah. Get over it. <laughs> Whatever you want to say to this poor man. Um, let's go. Let's drop. All right, spinning, spinning, spinning. Where it lands, nobody knows. I mean, we'll know in a second. Um, okay, okay, okay. 511. Not to be confused with 311. Um, that is going to be a newer newer entry here. But that is going to be... Oh, Eris over at Weimar over. So, Eris, if you're watching, shoot a comment out so that we know you're here. Otherwise, we will just show up unannounced and bring you a nice gift, which... You know, sounds pretty good, actually. Yeah. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. This has been another edition of Breakfast with Disaster. We're live every Tuesday at 10, 10 a.m. Uh, I will see you guys next week. Uh, who knows what we'll be talking about. You never know with this job what's going to happen in the next uh, seven days. So maybe you won't be here. Maybe I won't be here. Maybe this whole place won't be here. You can we'll leave vote. a comment and pitch for me to be back if you'd like. Yeah, vote for Travis. <laughs> uh, we'll see you guys next week. Thank you.